Today is Buju Banton. Definitely been highly regarded here and highly requested on the Not Nation channel. And I just felt like today is inspired by the right need for a call of freedom that everybody subtly desires right now. I feel like Buju's been preaching this for years. And if we only listen to the past and the elders of the past that have been spreading the light and burning down Babylon, we can apply it to today and realize that we need to stand up for our rights on a daily basis and lift the veil from over our eyes. So I wanted to attack this dreadlock review at another angle and really put in some time and some effort and some love and dedication into this video to really honor and shine the light of Buju Bantan while he's still here with us and show our respect and appreciation for the craft and the art that he's been put out. So Buju, we thank you enough for your contributions to the world and bringing out government corruption and standing up for ourselves and our rights. So today I'm gonna look at your dreads and give you the, the respect they deserve here on the Not Nation channel. Love Butch Banton in Jamaica, yeah. Let the use some respect Butch Banton and love Butch Banton, yeah, because I know that I wasn't born in socks and brought up on carpet. An image here from the beginning stages of his lock journey. We see the baby dreads in action here, probably here within the first two years of hair growth. And another very early picture from the early stages of his locks. This stage is actually the best dreadlock stage when you're free forming because it's the first signs of things starting to lock up and mature together. And you're just getting past the stage of your locks kind of going all over the place and doing their own thing. It's a real confidence boosting stage. An irony in a sense, because I did say that he is here to help us burn down Babylon. Now, if I were to look at his locks, I can definitely tell they've been free formed. 100%. The texture and the integrity of the locks are pretty smooth. And they don't show signs of twisting, interlocking, backcombing, crocheting. And the shapes are so random and unique, we can definitely tell they haven't been manipulated in. So these are the first set of his locks. The early stages of his lock journey. And I love to see how his hair has changed colors in the sun over the years. And a lot of his locks are not cylindrical, but tend to be flats. My favorite dreadlock shape. Now we do see some Congos happening here. As well as the scalp is not noticeable. There's no parting happening and no manipulation happening really tight down to the scalp that exposes any skin. But they have aged well with them. And by far, I don't see any gray hair whatsoever yet. This photo is showing us his tam half on, half off. Lots of different shapes on his locks. And this photo here is interesting because it kind of shows the hairline that he's working with. You can also see the shape of some of these locks kind of have that dread ball shape at the very end. Sometimes these tend to fall off, sometimes they stay on for longer than you could imagine by the, by the strand of the hair. I put an angel over me, be strong, will affirm meditation. One day things must get better, don't you go down if the red above the water, oh. And actually in this photo here, the hairline looks to be a little bit better but it did recede just a touch because I can see this shape and this shape here and the hair beneath it versus on this photo. He's got the two shapes here still, but no hairline right there at the front. And I get it with time, the hair is going to fade out a little bit, but I love that he's still rocking these locks until 
the wheels are falling off because in this photo here, the hairline is going back even more. And don't let that ever discourage you from growing locks. The feeling of thinking that your hair is falling out or it's thinning, don't listen to it and go for it still anyways, it's always worth the shot. I like this photo because his locks are actually in two strand twists in some areas. Now this may be just to keep his locks out of the way a little more, it could just be for style. But the length is definitely growing here compared to this older photo when his locks were still pretty short. He does kind of have a Bob Marley vibe about his locks. We try to make this music because if, if, if people cannot listen to this music like you see them today, it won't be viable, it won't live on. You understand? It'll be something like disposable music. We can't afford for that to happen. The music must have spirituality in it. That's what the founding fathers intended. This music is only 60 years old. We can't run it astray too quick. You understand? And the moral standard of the music must be kept. That's the only way we're going to take on from a man like Bernie Spear, who's 60 years old, and Israel Vibration, who's up in age. When those guys pass on, God forbid, who is going to be out here singing reggae music for the people? And they are very unique. And one thing that we do see a lot of, or not a lot of here with Buju, is he doesn't really style them a whole lot. Never really ponytails or dread buns or pineapple tops. They're either down or in a tam. This style is actually pretty unique. It's showing the bandana tied in a sideways fashion and some of his locks kind of like, loosely twisted together. Definitely showing the length. Mad length here. And I take it this bandana here is actually kind of hiding the hairline at the front. Crazy. I could imagine it's been at least 15 years since he's had these locks put in. Free forms are exactly that. They're free. And they're formed through freedom. It definitely takes a certain individual to be able to choose freedom. Even though freedom is for everybody, we have to really understand and realize that it's there for us to accept it and choose it if we so to want to be it. We stand up for what we believe in, you understand? Because we are a nation of people as always stood up for what we believe in. It's the same with locks. Freedom is free form. Free form is freedom. I personally feel we should never have to pay thousands of dollars and endure hours of pain all for the vanity of having a certain look. And this is widely debated because a lot of people will still pay into this and a lot of people will still create businesses that exploit this. But in the all truth, end all be all, nature has provided us with what we need to thrive and be happy within. And the free form freedom definitely provides this to us. The journey is cherishable. It's sweet, it's a journey, you know? Strangest feeling I'm feeling But I love we will always believe in Though you may think my faith is in vain Till Shiloh we chant Rastafari is me Looks like a more recent photo Lots of length happening still and His Congos aren't too overly big They actually came in a pretty good size over the years. Now I do love this look that he's able to provide with the dreadlock updo, the beehive, the turban. Not easy to do because it does take a lot of dedication to even get to the point and the length of having locks that are able to do this. So it's almost like a crown that you get through the years of being patient. You're rewarded with this crown, the dreadlock crown, for years of dedication. Another interesting look, he's got the silk bonnet on top. These are great to have in terms of wrapping your hair up without worrying about getting lint stuck in there. Definitely look out for the silk bonnets or silk wraps. Personally, I don't have any, but 
I've been using the silk pillowcase recently and it's been really comfortable. To attain freedom, why must they be shedding a flood? Is there no real love? Are they still holding a grudge? Stand up, defend your rights. Nation going to war against each other, but you are still my brother regardless of color. We demand the rights to be heard, the rights to be seen, the rights to question information. Can't you see the federal manipulation? Millions dying of starvation as the super power plants another bomber class invasion. <laughs> Who has the power to veto? Stand up and say no. Defend your rights. You have already paid the price and been the sacrifice. No more shedding of blood. No more loss of lives. Remove the veil from your eyes. Another photo of an updo. This one being with the tam halfway off. I noticed this look happens quite regularly with Buju. And it's kind of like the lazy, sloppy dreadlock updo, but still quite effective. Compared to, let's say, an updo like this that I feel like would have taken a bit more time because he has to wrap his hair in a crown first and then fit the bonnet or the skull cap over top. Which makes me think, what kind of skull cap is this? Because it seems to fit really small. I'm not too sure this one is fitted for dreadlocks particularly. I'm a living while I'm living to the Father I will pray. Only him know how we get through every day. Then I stand, but the greatest thing I have in my, in my corner is the love I have for my God. And the greatest thing I think I have in my corner is the love where my fear Another action shot with his locks flowing freely. These ones looking like they were a bit thicker. Maybe the prime time of Buju's locks. And it's this vibe, it's this essence right here that reminds me of Bob Marley and the way that he performs. This shot, this is probably my favorite photo that I've come across here so far because it shows a full head of locks on the top of his head. And there's no signs of receding or thinning at this point either. This angle particularly, I love to see of my own locks and other people's because it's not the angle you get to see quite often because when you look at somebody with locks or anyone, you're looking straight at them. You're not ever really looking down. So I always respect photos of locks that show the top of the crown, nice and clear. Crazy nice picture. Locks freely flowing over top of his head. Still got mad length happening. He's been so he's been so committed. Am I the only one that gets a two chains vibe off of him as well? But Buju was before two chains time, so does two chains give off a Bu does two chains give off a Buju Banton vibe? Is the real question. I think so. Bermuda, over me, out and run no man over me, out and run no gallant. And lastly here, a photo of him in the booth. Headphones and locks definitely work well. I used to worry that headphones would alter and damage the way my locks were forming freely, but in reality, it just helped out more in that area. So never be worried that headphones are ruining your locking process. 